What's going on everybody? It is Rocky in real time. Happy New Year. I'm happy for all the new subscribers. Thank you for rocking with me. And if you don't know, my name is Rocky. I'm an expat and I help other expats and aspiring expats transition into a sustainable and fulfilling life abroad. So stick with me. I've got a lot of good content coming up this year and in this video. So one of the questions I get a lot on this channel from this one video here is how do I hide my internet location from my employer or better yet, how have I been doing this for the last three years? Well, I'm going to tell you about a site to site VPN. A site to site VPN uses port forwarding to be able to have access to your home IP address given to you by your ISP provider. So that way you can actually look like you're working from home when in fact you're probably Chile or somewhere in South Africa or somewhere in Italy, wherever your mind or your heart or your body wants to take you, you can go and still be able to keep up with work and do work on the go with your own ISP provided IP address. And this is way better than using a software VPN like NordVPN or CyberGhost or all the others. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. But first, I need to tell you what you need to have because I didn't really explain this too much in the last video, but there are some prerequisites that you need to have for this. So I'm gonna explain that a little bit now. Now, the first thing I'm gonna recommend that you have is very fast internet speed on a stateside, Canada, Europe, wherever you are, you're gonna need fast internet. And that's crucial because you're sending network packets back and forth through these routers and there's going to be a tad bit of latency. So you need to account for that by having fast speed to begin with. So the latency doesn't really affect you too much while you're on your Zoom calls, your Teams meetings, while you're streaming video and doing anything else that you need for work and otherwise abroad. Now, the speed I recommend is to have at least 30 megabits per second of upload speed and 150 to 200 plus uh, megabits per second of download speed. That is the absolute bare minimum that I recommend so that you can work and stream and do anything else that you need successfully while you're abroad. Now, the next thing you're obviously gonna need is the router themselves. Now we can get a router like this one, which is the AC1300. You can also get the MT3000 or the AXT1800. And they all pretty much kind of just look like this. I'll put the links in the description in Amazon. Well, they have these LAN ports and WAN ports as well as a USB-C power port and a USB 3.0 power port. Uh, I think the MX, uh, the MT3000, sorry, has two, has a WAN, 2.5, I think, and then the LAN, so it doesn't have the three um, ports at the back, it has just two. Um, and then it has a thinner strip light in the front, but all of them have these two antennas. So you need a travel router like this one that you take with you abroad. And the good thing about these are that they're very, very compact. They fit in your pocket, your purse, your backpack, whatever. They're very, very slim in terms of their silhouette. Um, well, they're shorter than iPhones. So I'll put a video here um, juxtaposed to iPhones. They're really, really like, they're shorter than iPhones. They're a little bit thicker. Um, you maybe stack two of them together. Uh, these are about like three or four centimeters in, in, in thickness here. Um, but like I said, they still fit very easily in your pocket, your purse, your backpack. Um, I'd also recommend that you get a travel carry case from GLINet. Um, and these can uh, fit the routers themselves as well as your wires that come with it uh, and anything else that you wanna put in it. I'll demonstrate you real quickly. You can secure your router in there like that and close it. And this is very uh, good because it actually protects your router while you're on the go, which why wouldn't you want to? Because this baby is going to allow you to work from anywhere. So you gotta protect your equipment, right? And it's also, I think it's waterproof as well. So I'll link this in the description as well. So you get your router um, and then this is what you're gonna need to connect at your house. This is the GL uh, AX 1800 Flint. Now get the Flint one. I think this is about a hundred bucks on Amazon right now. Not the Flint two. Uh, the Flint two is a little overkill. You can get the Flint and be fine. Uh, 
there's no real need for you to get the Flint 2. I mean, that's for like hardcore networking geeks and whatnot. But for this, uh, you would just need the Flint. And the Flint, you connect at your house to your Spectrum, Verizon, Xfinity, whatever ISP provider you're with, you connect this to that router. Now at the back, it has a power, um, it has that power 12 volt uh, um, plug there. It has the uh, WAN port, which is highlighted in blue, and then four LAN ports. Then it has a USB 3.0 on the side. Uh, let that zoom a little bit. It has a USB 3.0 on the side, and then it also has the reset button here. So yeah, all in all, um, and also you can fold it up and like mount it against the wall, like flat. I'm gonna show you with the video. You can do that because a lot of you have these like little closets. I've noticed as setting these, as I was setting these up, you guys have these closets that have these like your Wi-Fi equipment, like your internet service provider or your your apartment complexes. Like put all that stuff in like a little closet, and there isn't a lot of space to have other extra cords and things. So the good thing about this is that there are two little holes at the back that allow you to mount this on a wall so you can push the antennas straight up and just mount it on a wall like the video I just attached. So those are the two routers that you need and you, you know you can get the case optionally. I highly recommend getting the case so while you're on the go you can just protect it while you move from country to country or um, just if you just need to have a case to protect it while you're traveling that's that's you know I recommend that um, but it's totally optional. Now, one other thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need for the setup process at least three ethernet cords, right? And I have a six foot one, and then there's one that comes with the Flint, and there's one that comes with the MT3000, or if you get the AX1800, uh, there's one that comes with each one of the routers. So you should have at least three. You can get the six foot one on Amazon, and I recommend this for when you travel abroad, you have somewhere to connect the router that your Airbnb host or your condo has if it's in a hard to reach place. Like if it's high above your head and the outlet, the nearest outlet is like a couple feet away. Um, the routers themselves, they come with these like two feet ones, which like, I mean, they're not gonna help you much in that situation. Just because I have run into this situation myself while traveling and working on the go with my travel router, I would recommend a six to eight foot cat six flat ethernet cord now this i don't want to unravel it because it's going to be messy but you, as you can see it's a flatter one it's not one of the thicker um round cylindrical um ethernet types and the difference between cat 5 and cat 6 is the amount of data that you will transmit but definitely get the cat 6 and you'll just need these three three ethernets during a setup process but when you're abroad with your travel router you only need one ethernet really and i'd say go with the longer one because you know just to be safe so you know you account for the situation where your router of the airbnb or the condo that you're staying in isn't a hard to reach place so the next thing you need is not really something you can buy it's just something that's you know vital to have in this process is a trusted friend family member or just your own spot where you can plug the flint this ax1800 in at uh the isp providers router you need this to be plugged in and remain connected throughout your travels or throughout your life abroad uh, so you need to have someone trusted somewhere safe to keep this so that it can stay unperturbed and undisturbed and untouched for the duration of your you know travels abroad or if you're living abroad like i have like mine is connected at my parents house and literally nobody touches it. Nobody touches it. So you need something like that. You need a trusted family friend or whatever person that you are sure is going to make sure that this stays untouched. Next, I'm gonna explain how this works because I do get a lot of questions about that. So basically, when you use the Flint, which is this one with the four antennas, and you have that connected at home and you're on the go, with your barrel, which is a smaller Wi-Fi travel router. Um, they work together by creating a secure connection over the internet. So in simple terms, the Flint at your home is set up with your home internet and acts as a special gateway, allowing only recognized devices to access your home network. 
Meanwhile, when you're abroad, you use the, the barrel here, um, the travel router to connect to the internet. And the barrel, this router talks to the home flint router over a secure tunnel. Remember the secure tunnel I was talking about. And this is known as a secure tunnel VPN. Um, a VPN that stands for virtual private network. And this secure tunnel um, makes it seem as if you're accessing the internet from your home. Now this keeps your online activity private and it gives you access to things that are only available through your home network. And the thing in this case that I'm talking about is your home IP address. So this connection that's created between these two routers um, while you're abroad, like this travel router and the Flint, um, this makes it seem as if you're accessing your home network from your home and gives you access to things in your home network, mainly your IP address while you're abroad. So basically your barrel connects to your Flint traveling through the internet via secured VPN tunnel and the Flint shares your residential IP address with the barrel on the go. So that's how it works. Now, I did say I was gonna talk about why I only recommend this type of connection while you're working abroad, whether it's for a short time or maybe you've moved abroad like I have. I recommend this whole site-to-site -site VPN connection that is you know, uh, working via port forwarding because what companies see um, is going to tip you off to, or tip them off to what you're using. So basically, let me explain. If you're using like NordVPN or if you're using something like CyberGhost, which both of those I've actually used in the past, those are good VPN options if it's just for personal use. But if you're using it for work and trying to work abroad, you might get spotted. And here's why. If you go into your web browser and you type in what's my IP address on your home router while you're at home in the States or Canada or Europe or wherever, if you type that into your browser, you're gonna see a bunch of information that's associated with the connection and the packets that are coming through to that website that they can see. And one of those things in particular that will tip a company off is that little section, and I'll put it here on the screen, that says ISP provider. Now, ISP provider is going to be your Verizon, your Spectrum, your Xfinity, your Optimum, your you know quantum or whatever network isp provider you're using and that should show up in that section but if you're using a software vpn like nordvpn or cyber goals which are like my two favorites so that's why i keep on mentioning them well when i did use vpns those were my two favorites um those will actually show vpn server like it does here instead of your actual isp provider but if you're using a site-to-site -site VPN with these routers that I'm describing, you will have that little section, that ISP provider section, show your IP, your internet service provider that you're using, which is your Verizon, your, uh, your uh, Optimum, your Quantum, or whatever ISP provider you're using back in the States or Canada, like Bell or something like that. That's what's gonna appear there. And that's what's gonna make it look like to your companies that you're working from home instead of Bali or you know Australia, or whatever you decide to go. Now there's a few ways that you can connect while you're abroad. You can use ethernet, which I recommend because that maintains the fastest connection. You can use Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi repeater. So you go into the admin page of your travel router and you use the Wi-Fi repeater option. You can use tethering through a phone or some other device or you can use a hotspot. Now, if you wanted to take your own hotspot with you, I do recommend this one device, which is a device, a hotspot, it's a, like a go anywhere companion that's you know available and able to work in 130 countries with 4G LTE speeds, and it's called the Solus. And it's this little orange uh, device, and I'll link it in the description. You can get one of these and you know connect you actually connect the barrel directly to this. Now, the way this works is when you're abroad in like, you know, Chile or Argentina or South Africa or wherever you wanna go, um, you get a local SIM card and you plug it into this. And then that is going to um, allow your hotspot to work. And then you connect this directly to your hotspot. Um, and that's pretty much how it works. And then you connect your work computer to this. You know, so that's basically how that works. Completely optional. 
um, you know, I'd only recommend it like if you're going into some rural area or you want like just Wi-Fi wherever you go. But if you're gonna be stationary like I am, like I'm in my home office here in Brazil and like I don't really work anywhere outside my office and wherever I do work, if it's like a cafe or something, I can connect to the internet there with this. Uh, but that's very, very rare. I usually just work at home or if I'm on the go, like if I'm in a different city in Brazil, um, which I do travel often, I just take this and I take a um, Ethernet cord, one of these Cat6 Ethernet cords, and I connect this to the ISP router at my Airbnb or condo, which you know I'm gonna be staying at for that week that I travel. So again, you can get the Solus, which I believe is still maybe $100, $130. Um, you know, I'll put the actual price here. But um, I think I bought it for like 120 something or something on Amazon last year. It might have changed, might be cheaper or about the same price. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, for your situation, it might work. If you're in some rural part of Colombia or something like that, or you know, some rural part of Jamaica, um, then yeah, you can take that so you can have Wi-Fi wherever you go. Um, but for me, I'm in just one place, I'm in a condo and I have an ISP router here so I can just connect directly to it and that's the fastest connection. So yeah. Anyway, if you're interested in setting up these travel routers, just this travel router and this flint so that you can go and work wherever you want because you're 100% remote, right? Why do I have to stay at home if I'm 100% remote? Um, yeah just schedule a consultation with me reach out to me on my website rirtmedia.com i'm going to have the link in the description and also here i'm going to show you um, where you can reach out to me and schedule a consultation or send me an email at rocky at rirtmedia.com and i'll work with you to set these up so you can be on the go and one good thing about this is that once you set it up once you're never going to have to worry about it again literally i have an mt1300 because i have two of these devices this is not even my main one my main one is sitting in a corner over there and that's the one i maintain and keep in my office this is the one that i take with me on travel because i love these devices so much but like once you set them up once that is it you do not have to worry about setting them up again like at all, like it's just one and done and that's it. I literally have not had to touch anything on my MT-1300, which is this gray or like light gray. This is like more of a dark charcoal gray. The other one is like a light gray. I'll put a, can I'll put a video here on the screen, um, but I, I set it up once. I've never had to touch it. I've never had to update firmware or none of that stuff. Like it just works. And at one point I was working two remote jobs here in Brazil. Well, not here in Brazil, but you know, two remote jobs from the United States and working here in Brazil. And they were connected to that device and it worked like a charm perfectly. So like I said, if you need help setting this up, I'm available to set this up. Hit me up on my website, send me a message and I'll get back to you and we'll find a time where we can both work to set this up. All right, so that's all for this video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And thank you for those who have subscribed. I have a lot of great content that I have prepared for this year. And I really want to knock it out the park this year. Like I really want to provide you with a lot of value on my channel this year as a thanks for subscribing, as a thanks for rocking with me. A lot of you guys that I see in the comments and the description have been with me since day one. And I really appreciate that as my channel starts to grow. Anyway, thanks. Take care.